Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you the magic cocoa trick where cocoa dipped in water or milk seemingly gets wet and then suddenly is magically dry when you touch it. So recently on TikTok, this cocoa experiment has gone completely viral with lots of different people trying it. So I wanted to try it myself and talk about the science behind how it's actually working. All right, so first we're gonna do this in milk and then we'll try it with water so you can see it a little bit better. So you need a glass of milk. So you just get a spoonful of cocoa powder, dip it in the milk. Raise it up, it looks completely wet, but then just give it one little poke, and it's magically dry again. It's like you're popping a balloon or something. Okay, let's see that again. Dip it in the milk. Pull it up, it's completely wet, but then just poke it and it's dry again. Look at that. See if this works with water. Put it in the water, then poke it, and it's dry. Now the way that this cocoa acts when it gets in the milk definitely has something to do with the hydrophobic nature of the cocoa. For example, I've found that it doesn't work at all if you use completely fat-free milk. In fact, the cocoa is so hydrophobic that you can't even dip the spoon underneath the milk. It just floats on top. So you try to push it down and the clump of cocoa just floats to the top. So what's going on here is that the cocoa powder is mildly hydrophobic, meaning it repels water and attracts air. So when you dip it under the milk, what happens is it forms this little air bubble around it, or it forms a water bubble around the air and cocoa. So once you pull it out, there's this trapped air inside of it that has this mildly hydrophobic cocoa in it, but it stays pretty stable because there's surface tension of water around the cocoa, and also the cocoa on the outer edge has started to mix with the water as well to form this slushy mixture. So there's the skin around the cocoa that's wet, but once you pop it, you break that skin, there's surface tension to it, and so it breaks almost like a balloon. But in this reaction, the surface tension isn't very strong, so it's not a really rapid break. If you use something that's very hydrophobic, then you can see this effect in more detail. For example, I have here a powder called lycopodium powder, and these are spores of moss that are super hydrophobic. And what that means is that it's very hard to get them wet. If you pour it on top of water, you can't get it wet. For example, here I have it on top of some water, and if I try to dunk my hand in and get my hand wet, I can't even do it. So I dip it in and my hands stay completely dry. That's because the spores keep a layer of air around my finger, I pull it out and it can't get wet. And so if you put these spores on a spoon and dip them in the water, if the water can get completely around the spoon, it forms this air bubble around it that's slightly stable because of the surface tension of water. And if you pull it out slowly, you can get it to be stable a little bit as a water bubble around the air bubble inside of it. So pull it out. So let me dip my spoon in. I pull it out slow. Oh, it popped already. So it's already dry. Try it again. Oh, you saw it real quick right there. So look how cool that was. It's the same effect as the cocoa, but a lot stronger surface tension because it's pure water on the outside as opposed to the cocoa water mixture. What's really cool about this lycopodium powder or hydrophobic powders in general is that if you take that layer of air around them, they can't be hydrophobic anymore. So if I stick them in a vacuum chamber, they're not hydrophobic. Okay, so let's put our powder and water in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in this plastic ball here, and as it goes through the lycopodium, it's going to get coated in it. And it's going to stay coated with a little bit of air with lycopodium around it. But let's see what happens if we apply a vacuum around it now. So let's slowly put it in. So you can see that it's in the bottom there now. So you can see that now it's completely covered with the lycopodium. So it's not wet inside. But let's see what happens when we apply a vacuum now. You can see it losing the air around it, bubbling off of it.
But now let's see what happens when we let air back in. Let's see if this ball is wet. Whoa, you can see it. You can see how it just got soaked with water because there's no longer air around it. So let's try to get it out of there. Whoa, see how the lycopodium now just dissolved in the water? Because it's no longer hydrophobic now that we suck the air out around it. That's crazy, it's completely wet now, no longer hydrophobic, just because we put it in a vacuum. And what's really cool with this lycopodium powder, because it stays dry if you have it in water, lycopodium powder is actually pretty flammable. Actually, anything that you make really small in small little spores is gonna be flammable. So you can actually pour this water out that has the lycopodium powder on top of it, and then you can actually light the water on fire. <laughs> hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet and hit the bell so that you can be notified when I release my latest video. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.